Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, One Blessed Mess. If you are new here, my name is Christy and I am going on year two of homeschooling. And I have been sharing for the past couple of weeks our curriculum choices for 2020 and 2021. I will have those individual grade core choices listed down below, but today I am going to be sharing with you what we're doing for science this year. Okay, so I have four different science units that I am going to be implementing this year, and I am doing a mixture of Gather Round Homeschool and the Good and the Beautiful Science Units, so I get the best of both worlds. I know there are pros and cons to both of these curriculums, and I am going to be happy to flip through everything for you. I will also have each curriculum choice or each science unit choice listed down in the description box below with a timestamp just in case you wanted to see a certain one but weren't wanting to sit through the entire video or the entire flip through. In addition to the flip throughs, I'm also going to be showing you what we are using with our science curriculums as far as like book choices or activities and also what I do to bind our gather round homeschool science units. I usually print them out. I have an Epson Eco Tank, and I will go into more of that later, but I have an Epson that I print everything out on, and then I also have the ProClick, which I will demonstrate for you how I use that, what I use to bind it, and how I like it so far. So let's get started. All right, getting started here, um, we actually started this last, school year but never finished it. We started at the very very end of the school year and it is the gather round oceans unit. So I have the teacher's manual right here as well as um, I have a pre-reader student notebook. This is for my going into first grade daughter Maddie. I used it the pre-reader for her even though she started reading last year because it just seemed like the best fit for her and I still feel like it would probably be the best fit for her right now even though she is just learning how to read. And then I have early elementary for my daughter Kaylin and for my son Elijah. Kaylin is going into fourth. Elijah is going into third. Now I know early elementary, what's the difference between early elementary and upper elementary when it comes to a fourth grader? Maybe a fourth grader should go into upper elementary. I was looking at um, more of the convenience aspect of it, of having two kids on the same page because my daughter Maddie is already on her own level. So I just kind of saw it as there wasn't that big of a difference between the lower elementary and the upper elementary. Next year I'll probably move her up to upper elementary when she's in fifth but it does go up to age 10 as far as lower elementary is concerned and she is just going to be turning 10, so I feel like it's still a good fit. So to go along with our oceans unit study, we have this Fly Guy shark book. My son absolutely loves Fly Guy and he loves sharks, so this was a perfect addition. And then I also have this National Geographic Kids, my first big book of the ocean. And this is just like it says, it's a big book. And it's got a lot of very colorful illustrations about all of the creatures and things that you will find in the ocean. And I will have all these items linked down below. Uh, I got most of them off of Amazon, so I will link those down below for you as well. And then we have got this big book of the blue by Yuval Zommer. And I just absolutely loved how this was laid out. I loved the illustrations. If you turn it this way. I love how everything is like on a couple of different pages and there are little facts all over. It's just a really beautiful big book that my kids love to look at. So without further ado, let's go ahead and flip through this Gather Round Oceans Unit Study. All right, here we have the Gather Round Homeschool Oceans Unit Study. So I have the teacher's guide here, as well as um, a student notebook that is pre-reader level and a student notebook that is early elementary. And like I mentioned before, my daughter Kaylin 
was also um, doing the early elementary notebook when we started the oceans unit study last year. So first I'm going to go through the teacher's guide. I had these printed through the homeschool printing company. I will leave their link down below. The thing about my Epson Eco Tank, I absolutely love my Eco Tank. I no regrets whatsoever. I wish I would have went a model up. So I have the 2720 model, and I wish I would have went with the 2760 model because it prints front and back. So I had the homeschool printing company. I ended up winning a free unit from Gather On Homeschool. And so I used that money that I would have spent paying for the actual curriculum and just had the homeschool printing company print it for me. But I will also show you my own printed version of the Gather Round curriculum when we go through the human body in just a second. So anyway, enough bunny trailing. So we've got different read alouds and for different levels when it comes to the ocean study, supplement of books and basket books. And of course, you don't have to get all or even any of these. These are just recommendations. Um, here are Wild Kratts and Octonauts coordinating episodes, which is really, really nice. You can see my daughter Zoe has made her mark. All right, and then here we have a supply list for every single lesson. Now, we didn't get very far into this, so I didn't even... I didn't even plan out lessons or anything, but it has a lesson planner. Um, we have like a list, don't forget list, adventures, a shopping list, a little coloring page, and then here's the table of contents. So this is going to show you where each lesson is, as well as the appendix. Another little coloring page. And here is an introduction to oceans. So this is going to be lesson one, and I remember we went through all of these as a family and the kids were ooing and aahing over all of these different kinds of fish and creatures underneath the sea. So it will tell you exactly what you need to read, exactly um, the day at the glance. Now we use this as a supplement in our homeschool. Some people use gather round as like their homeschool like that is what they use and of course you need to supplement this with a math curriculum but this is an all-inclusive curriculum so for us we if we found that a day was kind of getting lengthy or there was too much to do because we use this as our science curriculum I would just break down the day so feel free to do that if you are using this as a science curriculum all right and then this is Oceans 2. So this is what you would read. I mean, chapter 2. <laughs> and then reading about giant squids. And then here's chapter 3, which is about sharks and the different kinds of sharks. So this is what the teacher guide kind of looks like. It just outlines each chapter and tells you, like, if you were using this as a all-inclusive curriculum, your day at a glance. This is what your day would look like. And then also lists a lot of the sources down here. It is a really beautiful curriculum. I will definitely say it is gorgeous. It's very detailed. So, yeah, this is the teacher's guide. And this also has, this has about, this has 29 lessons in it, or no, 20 lessons in it. So you can make this stretch as long or as short as you want. If you want this to go a month, you can make it go a month. If you want it, if you want to do it um, once a week or twice a week, you can make it stretch a couple months. It's all about how much or how little you want to do it. So let's go ahead and go through. I got a bunch of paper dust over there from binding things earlier. All right, so this, when you uh, print with the homeschool printing company, it comes with this nice little protective layer. All right, and then this is pre-reader. So this just shows you the different things that your pre-reader will be doing in here. As you can see, she colored this. 
seahorse. She checked off all of the lessons, even though we didn't get nearly that far. <laughs> this is what I like about it. See, while you're reading the lesson, she colored this fish, so it kind of keeps their hands occupied. And then here she um, traced cues and wrote cues. Um, and then we were working on the letter Q some more. We skipped the, see, we skip things sometimes just because it's redundant. We've already done math that day. So it's, you know, we'll just kind of feel it out. I don't make her do anything like this. We skip that. Wow, we skipped a lot of stuff. Oh, color the great white shark. And then as you could see, she, <laughs> wow we did this one so this is what the pre-reader notebook looks like I'm just flipping through here just to kind of give you a look at what all's in here a lot of copy work, um, a lot of, there is some math in here, but you know, not nearly enough to be a comprehensive math curriculum in itself. There's some practice for us, we use it as practice. So I just kind of go with the flow and see where we're at that day and what, you know, her attention spans at. And then we have Elijah's early elementary and like I said before Elijah and Kaylin both used early elementary so I'm just going to be showing you one. So this goes to show you what all is going to be happening in the early elementary student notebook. We've got a reading log which we did not fill out and it's like a little coloring page and okay so they chose a creature to do like more research on and so this was his he did a wolf fish and we did a science experiment which we include maddie in on that as well even though that wasn't in her notebook that's the thing we just kind of have to feel it out and if there's something that's over her head you know obviously she could do something different there's He did a Megalodon. <laughs> so as you could see, the early elementary is definitely a step up from the pre-reader, or it's two steps up from the pre-reader because there's pre-reader, early reader, early elementary, and then late elementary. So, yep, see, we skipped that. But they do really, really like the art aspect of all of it. And I don't think we got any further than that. So just show you kind of just a lot of research about the different creatures, a lot of copy work, um, a lot of reading comprehension when it comes to the things you teach out of the teacher's manual. Yeah, very gorgeous love the artwork next up I have gather round human body and this was actually a last-minute addition for me I wasn't planning on doing the human body this year but my kids have been having an interest in just like different things how different things work in your body um, they've had a lot of questions so I thought hey this would be a great one to go through and heck I have questions about the human body so I'm sure that I'll be learning a lot right along with them as well as I have this early reader printout I did move Maddie up to early reader for this one it just seems like it'll fit really well with her and I'm not sure at what point in the year we're going to be doing this I will tell you this when you buy the digital version 
of any gather round unit study they have the student digital version which comes with one grade level and the teacher manual or you can just buy the digital bundle which comes with all the levels so if you are teaching multiple children you can go ahead and just purchase the digital bundle because you're going to get the most bang for your buck you're going to be able to download and um print out whatever level you need as well as the teacher manual and so that's what i do so i just purchased uh early read i also have early elementary which i am going to be utilizing for kaylin and elijah like i said they're going into fourth and third so um, i'm going to be keeping them at early elementary just to kind of keep them on the same level and as you can see i have not found this or anything yet we're going to go ahead and do this together in a bit all right, and so I also got this Osborne look inside your body. For, and it is just a neat little flat book, like different flaps open to show you how different body systems work. It's a really neat interactive book. I just absolutely love it. My kids love Osborne books anyway. And I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. I think it's Osborne or is it Usborne? I don't know. But I'm just going to keep saying Usborne. Comment down below and let me know if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. It's very possible. Very possible with me. Um, so yeah, this is just a really neat little interactive book that we absolutely love that will go perfectly with this study. And then from Amazon, I picked up three of these. These are human body activity books. And my kids have already been trying to do these and I keep having to tell them, hey, wait until we do our human body study. But it's just a really neat, um, like little activity books like that go along with different parts of your body, different body systems. They have illustrations, just really cool, artistic, even some like little crossword puzzles. It's just a fun little addition to our human body study. I just think it'll be great for those moments where maybe you need to keep a kid company or something while you're working with another. So now let's go ahead and go bind up this early elementary student workbook. And we will also flip through the teacher's manual and the student workbooks. I have an early elementary notebook, student notebook right here. And as you can see, this is quite a bit thicker than the oceans unit study because I could only print it on one side. I used my Epson Eco Tank 2720 printer. I would highly recommend if you are homeschooled the 2760 um, printer because that post or that prints double sided. I post or I printed this on 32 pound paper. I'm pretty sure um, it's very very thick, very high quality paper. And I mean, it did a beautiful job printing though. I cannot complain about that. It's just really thick. So I am going to go ahead and bind this today using my Pro Click. And then I also have this coil that I'm using. These are the Pro Click coils. I am gonna have to double check the measurement of these. I have some coils that go up to 80 something pages, but that's not quite enough for this. This has 100 and quite a bit. It goes up into the 100 teens, like 113 or 115 or something like that. So this is the biggest coil that I could find. And so we are going to see if this works. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how I find my unit studies. So with this thick of paper, the ProClick can do up to six pages at a time. So I like to do about four pages at a time just to make sure it doesn't jam. And I set it in there, line it up real good, and then... <laughs> it's really loud. <laughs> but... As you can see, binds the sides all nicely. And I just start from the back of the book and work my way to the front.
Okay, so I have all of the holes, as you can see, all poked in it. And now to put the coil on. So I like to bend it a little bit starting out. It just makes it easier to hook into the holes. And once again, I start from the back of the book and I could do a pretty good amount of pages at first. So just line it up and just kind of do that. I get the rest of it ready. And sort of keep it at an angle there so that way I can just hook the pages in there easily. Whoops. <laughs> I am no pro. <laughs> At this pro click no pun intended but I'm just finding what is easiest for me I didn't watch any tutorials on it or anything so I'm just kind of winging it I know it came with a tool like a special tool I think to close the pro click find or the um, coil but I'll show you what I do here that I found works just as easily I think it's not too terribly hard it's just when you've got a really thick book like that it gets a little tricky towards the end <laughs> trying to fit all of the pages in there now we're getting towards the top here so I'm gonna start kind of getting little less and less pages Flip in here. We go and get rid of the last ones. See if these fit. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to click the first coil and the last one just to lock everything in like this, as you can see. And then one by one, I will just click, click, click. That's what I love about these coils. They just click right together that easily. I'm just going down, 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 down. And they click together so, so easily. I have never had a problem with them not clicking together. And they stay clicked together too, from what I can tell. We haven't used the books yet, obviously, but. And there you have it. We're all bound. It opens. It's we're pretty much at the maximum amount of pages for this binding, but it works just fine. It looks great. All right, for the Gather Round Homeschool Human Body Science Unit, I have a teacher's guide here. I have an early reader for my daughter Maddie who is going into first, and I have early elementary for my son Elijah and my daughter Kaylin who are going into third and fourth respectively. And like I mentioned before, I used my Epson Yuko Tank 2720 to print. It prints one-sided, so it's extra thick, a lot thicker than the um, Oceans Unit Study readers were, but I also printed it on thick paper so that they would hold up. So I went ahead and put the teacher's guide into a binder like this. I will go ahead and get started. There's a little coloring page and this just kind of tells about Gather Round, a day with Gather Round Homeschool, what that looks like. And then they will include pages like notebooking, history, science, grammar, and social studies. Art, Bible, copy work and spelling, writing projects, and geography. So how long does it take? It says, if time is short, you can finish all your subjects in one, one and a half to two hours. Just add math and you're finished. So like I said before with the Oceans Unit Study, this does, that you can use this as an all-inclusive curriculum, um, but you do need a math um, curriculum to go along with it. We are using it strictly for science, so we might add and edit things or omit things just depending on our time. 
so oh these are all just resources for the different levels like pre-reader early reader early elementary upper elementary middle high school and then hands-on supplemental and then here's a little lesson planner all the different lessons there are 20 lessons there's a list adventures and shopping another little coloring page and then here's a table of contents another coloring page okay so here's the introduction so this is lesson one and it introduces our amazing bodies it talks about how we are made in his image so it incorporates bible into there as well um, and then it talks about Genesis and creation and maintaining life and survival needs. And then here's an assignment. So this is the time that the kids will work in their notebooks. There's like little fun facts that there are throughout the whole teacher's planner. And then here's hands-on adaptation. So this looks quite a bit, um... I know this is a, a newer unit, and Oceans is a unit that came out la this past year too, but this looks like uh, it has a lot more as far as like telling you what to do hands-on wise um, and then different other like extra resources. So, um, so here's lesson one day at a glance. So this, okay. This breaks it down for each. So I would be going with early reader color the area of the Garden of Eden. This is another thing that I like that um, is not included in the ocean study that it is giving you kind of an overview of what's going on in each kid's notebook instead of having to go to each individual kid and being like, okay, this is, let's see what you need to do today and let's see what you need to do today. It has it already written down there. So that's great. And then, so here is lesson two, talking about cells and skin. And as you can tell, the illustrations are just gorgeous. I love the watercolor. And it goes into great detail about cells. And I know that there are a lot of really fun experiments that you can do. We need to get a microscope. Because <laughs> I have a feeling we could really use one this year. Okay, so I'm just going to flip through a little bit. It's going to take you through all the different body systems. And like I said, with the student notebooks, everything is all tailored to that child's age. So there's no need to self um, edit anything for your child. This is going to be taught to all of them at once and then they will work individually in their own notebooks. So there we go. Here's the different skeletal systems, endocrine systems. So it just has like a little, little resources on the back. So that is the teacher's guide. So let's go ahead and do the early reader. All right, and this is the one that I um, also self-bound. And it's tight, <laughs> the binding's tight, don't get me wrong, but it's not, it still opens very, very easily. It's just at its max. So I would say no more than 120 pages max for um, this size binding and for this thickness of paper, for sure. So this shows you early reader-wise scope and sequence. And like I said, when it comes to like spelling words and things like that that are incorporated in this, we don't need to do that because we already have a language arts curriculum. This is just going to be science for us. Got reading log, reading log, little coloring page. Oh, that's cute. So as you listen to today's lesson, color the picture, trace the vocabulary words. So that's really, really cool. And then here's a little map of where the Garden of Eden was approximately located. Color the circled areas below, which is where they estimate the Garden of Eden was. So it's incorporating just a bunch of different things into one. 
A lot of copy work, which is great. A lot of artwork, which is also great. And like I said, it's super thick because I could only <laughs> print on one side. But I think this is going to be great for her. I think she's really going to enjoy this. And of course, you know, if things are a little too over her head, then... We can always omit as we go. That is the beauty of the flexibility of homeschooling. Is that you can make it what you want it to be. But this looks like a really great gentle approach to science for her age. So that is the early reader. Here is early elementary, which I will be using for my third and fourth graders this year. All right, so here's a scope and sequence for science and health. They also get a reading log at the beginning. And then here's our table of contents. And it looks like they're going to be doing the same thing pretty much that Maddie is going to be doing. Some copy work. Some artwork. Learning about Hippocrates. So it looks like it's a step up for sure from where Maddie's at, even though there are some of the same aspects of her notebook, but it is definitely more, it's wordier uh, than hers is. And definitely a step up, but still beautiful, still full of pictures and colorful, still incorporating the Bible in there and labeling and a lot of artwork and poetry and I just I love that it incorporates all of these things into science that's not what you typically see in a science curriculum so I just absolutely love that just flipping through yeah that is the student notebook for the early elementary level and that is Gather Round Homeschool Human Body Unit Study. Next up, moving on to the good and the beautiful, and I'm not doing these in any particular order. I'm not sure which unit study we'll start out with this year. I think we'll probably start with the Oceans Unit Study just because we ended on it last year just to finish that one up and then possibly move on um, to Space. I don't know yet. I'm trying to kind of gauge what would be good at different parts of the year because that would also, you know, if there are different field trips we could do or things outside that we could do that pertains to the unit study, I want to make sure that the weather is appropriate. So we will, I don't know, I'm going to have to plan. I'm going to be doing a homeschool planning video on Friday, so possibly I'll figure all that out for that video. But moving on to the good and the beautiful meteorology. I've had my eye on this for a long time and so when I won the Good and the Beautiful curriculum contest, which I'll leave that video down below, I had to snag this. So this is a K through 8 science unit study and unlike Gather Round Homeschool, you don't need different student notebooks for this one. Um, it's just one book that serves as both the teacher manual and student activity sheets, which I will just probably photocopy for each child. In addition to the meteorology unit, I've got this Magic Treehouse Twisters book. I've got a National Geographic Kids Weather, and we did do some weather-related science last year, so I already had these books on hand. This uh, Ready to Read Rainbow book, and another rainbow book. Yeah, we did some weather-related things and like rainbow-related things last year, so I already had these books on hand ready to go and so let's go ahead and flip through the good and the beautiful meteorology. Please go through K from K through 8 
and I bought these pre-printed from The Good and the Beautiful. I just bound them and pro-clicked them myself. All right, so this shows you the table of contents for meteorology, the unit information. So each child will need a science journal. We're gonna have a little science wall to hang up any vocabulary words. There are some mini books that are included, which are probably accidentally bound, but I can always tear the pages out. Um, lesson preparation, experiments, and a weather station. All right. So it tells you all the supplies that you're going to need for each lesson ahead of time so you can prepare. And it also tells you some optional read aloud storybooks, which we already have some read alouds that we're going to be using, but we'll keep our eye out for other ones as well. And here are the vocabulary words that I have bound. <laughs> so I will tear these out, probably laminate them and um, cut them out and hang them up on our little, we have like a little pocket chart that we hang our science unit study words on. So. All right, so lesson one, the creation of weather. So it tells you what to prepare. Um, print two scripture pages included in this lesson. So if there's anything included in these lessons, like this scripture page right here, I will just photocopy this and give it each child a copy. No big deal whatsoever. It's better than having three of these printed out, you know, there's no need for that. We can just photocopy what we need. Um, and then here is the mini book, which I will also tear out and assemble. And that moves on to lesson two. So it looks like, you know, you just need to make sure that you're preparing ahead of time for these lessons. Um, we are going to probably be doing science a couple times a week, so it's not going to be really preparation heavy for us, I don't think. We just need to make sure that we plan ahead of time and print um, or copy pages that I'll need ahead of time. That way I'm not scrambling at the last minute as usual. Um, but it, it's nice because it does go through each individual thing that you were going to be doing. And it also tells you exactly what to say. So there's another mini book that I bound. <laughs> and then yeah, so these are how the lessons are set up with the good and the beautiful. It's definitely different than gather round. It's a different feel. But like I said, I think it'll be good to just have a little change of pace. Make this what we want it to be as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be done exactly by the book. You can make it work for your family. And it's still very, very beautiful, very colorful, lots of pictures. Ooh, my kids love tornadoes, so that will be a good, that will be a fun chapter. So yeah, that is The Good and the Beautiful Meteorology. Last but certainly not least, I have The Good and the Beautiful Space Science, another unit that I have had my eyes on for a very long time. I love space, my kids love space, so we're really excited to dive into this this year. Along with that, I have the little kid's first big book of space. And this is just like the big ocean book, a very large, colorful book about space that my kids love to look at. And then I've got another Usborne Look Inside Space book. This is... What happened? Okay, this is also a flat book. So as you can see, just flap it open. It's got information, very interactive, very fun for kids of all ages. I also have this Who Was Neil Armstrong book. We love the Who Was series. These are so awesome. These are cheap books. They're small, they're great for read alouds and they're really great to just learn random facts about different people or events or things. And so I think this is gonna be a great addition to our science unit. And then for my daughter Zoe, who is going on two, I got her this little 
it's like a little board book because I want to start including her more into our school days this year even though I know she's not going to be doing the things that the other three are doing I wanted her to have her own little science unit study too so let's go ahead and flip through the good and the beautiful space here is the good and the beautiful space science so once again set up the exact same way you need a science journal we'll have a science wall with we'll many books that i accidentally bound and it tells you some field trip ideas and here's the vocabulary words i need to tear out all right oh here's some planet cards and then here's lesson one, introduction to space. So it tells you how to prepare, what to read, and then what to have the children do. And for this, since it is just K through eight, strictly K through eight, when it comes to my youngest daughter, well, not my youngest daughter, when it comes to my youngest homeschooler, Maddie, who is going into first, I will just have to use discretion on what I feel like she is capable of doing. Um, as far as like, you know, she's obviously not on the level of the other two kids. They're so close in age that it's like they pretty much do things on almost the same grade level. So, um, I will just use discretion on, you know, what I feel like she is capable of doing. If there's something that's a little bit over her head, I'll probably just have her draw or do something fun like that while we're, you know, still doing science together, but... Not as, you know, hers won't be as intensive as the other kids. There's really beautiful pictures in this. Very beautiful. I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be good. It looks gorgeous. And we are really, really interested in space. So this is going to be great. And that is the good and the beautiful space science. All right, well, I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. I hope that you enjoyed getting a look into what we're doing for science this year. Science is one of my absolute favorite subjects. It's always a hit in our homeschool and I'm excited to learn right alongside the kids. So um, yeah, I'm real excited to utilize Gather Around Homeschool and the Good and the Beautiful Science. We did buy some unit studies last year with the Good and the Beautiful and I think that my kids are at a better age this year to be able to incorporate all of them together. Um, we will see how it goes, though. I will keep you guys updated along the way, as always. And, of course, Gather Around Homeschool is a very gentle, uh, all-inclusive approach to unit studies that doesn't include math, but includes pretty much every other subject you can think of. So, um, we really, really like Gather Around for that reason. And so, I think incorporating both of them into our homeschool, it doesn't have to be an either-or situation. Kind of give us a change of scenery, if needed. Um because I found sometimes things get stagnant if you're using it every single day. So I think that maybe by using different curriculums when it comes to our science unit studies and even bunny trailing, uh, if we get like caught up in space and we get caught up into like one specific planet or something like that, you can always bunny trail and spend as much time as you want on that specific thing. That is the beauty of homeschooling. It doesn't have to fit a certain agenda. It doesn't have to fit in a box. You make it what you want to make it. So this was our science unit studies for the 2020-2021 school year. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel if you're new here. Please like it, please comment down below. Let me know what science unit studies you're excited for in your homeschool this year. And I am going to be coming back at you soon with more curriculum choices as far as our extras and family curriculum is concerned. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you very soon. Take care. You look so beautiful and I'm so lucky to be yours.